Now coming to the most important topic that is transport of oxygen. More than the transport of oxygen, the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve which is associated with this is very very important. Now let us talk about the transport of oxygen. How oxygen is transported from the atmosphere to the tissue and what is the partial pressure in various places and how much amount is delivered to the tissue. So coming to the atmospheric pressure, the atmospheric pressure is around 760 mm of Hg. Among these, it is contributed by the partial pressures of various gases. Like nitrogen is causing around 79 percentage, 24 percentage of oxygen and very very minimal amount of carbon dioxide. So what is the partial pressure of oxygen? How will you calculate it? It is contributing 21 percentage. So multiply by 21 by 100, it gives around 160 mm of Hg. This is the atmospheric levels of oxygen. But do you think the same oxygen reaches the blood supply? No, the answer is no. Because whenever we are inspiring, what will happen is there is addition of water vapor. In the nasal cavity, in the pharynx, there is addition of water vapor. And this water vapor pressure is usually 47 mm of Hg. So what I should do? I should subtract this 47 mm of Hg. So what will happen is the total partial pressure of gas is 713. And out of this, 21 percentage is our oxygen so which brings the inspired air oxygen to around 149 from 160 the inspired air it has become 149 and in the alveoli also there is continuous oxygen consumption there is something called as oxygen consumption because of this oxygen consumption the PO2 levels are further dropped down it drops to around 100 mm of Hg even this 100 mm is not transported in the blood. Why? Because we know there is one physiological shunt which is directly bringing the venous blood into the arterial system that is with the help of bronchial vessels. So what happens here is the partial pressure drops still more. The partial pressure drops to around 95 to 98 mm of Hg. So this 95 to 98 mm of Hg is the one that is being transported in the arterial side. So this will be transported in the arterial side with the partial pressure of this much and whenever it reaches the tissue, it gives out the oxygen and the partial pressure in the venous side drops to around 40 mm of Hg. It is very very less. This is all about the various partial pressures of oxygen. Now coming to the transport forms of oxygen. Oxygen is primarily transported in two forms. One is the dissolved form another one is the hemoglobin bound oxygen. The dissolved form is very very less which is around 1 to 3 percentage. The hemoglobin bound form is very very high. It is the one which is carrying maximum amount of oxygen that is 97 percentage. This dissolved form of oxygen is carried very little. The ml if you calculate it is just 0.29 ml. But what is the important thing about this dissolved form? The important thing about this dissolved form is it is the one which is contributing to the partial pressure. Whenever it is bound to the hemoglobin, it will not cause any kind of partial pressure because it is like a weightless molecule. Then there are MCQs based on this hemoglobin bound oxygen wherein they can ask you what is the amount of oxygen that can be carried if the hemoglobin is fully saturated and it is a pure form of hemoglobin. This is an arbitrary number not present is because in humans both of it is not that. It is not fully saturated, it is not pure hemoglobin also. Whenever it is fully saturated and pure hemoglobin, it will carry 1.39 ml of oxygen. So how can they put the MCQ? They will put the MCQ like this. A yeah, hemoglobin of the person is 15 grams. Calculate the oxygen that can be carried if the hemoglobin is fully saturated and pure. If they give it fully saturated and pure, then multiply it by 1.39. Then coming to if they just give fully saturated hemoglobin, they are not measuring it as pure. So fully saturated hemoglobin, this is also an arbitrary number, can carry around 1.34 ml. This is usually asked in the MCQs, this 1.34 ml. Whenever the hemoglobin is fully saturated, what is the oxygen carrying capacity? 1.34 ml of oxygen. But in the arterial blood, it is not fully saturated, only 97 percentage is saturated. Ideally, this 1.29 ml is the one which is carried in 1 gram of hemoglobin in the arterial blood of humans. So for 15, milli 15 grams, what will happen is like hemoglobin taking 15 grams is normal, it will be around 19.5 ml. So 
So 19.5 ml is carried in the hemoglobin bound form and 0.3 ml is carried in the hemoglobin dissolved form, like in the dissolved form. So the total which is carried in the arterial side will be an addition of 0.29 and 19.5 which is 19.8 ml of oxygen per 100 ml. When you do the same exact calculation for the venous system, the venous system is going to carry 15.2 ml of oxygen per 100 ml. So, this is the oxygen carrying capacity in the arterial side and venous side. So, how much will be delivered to the tissue? I know the arterial side, I know the venous side. So, whatever is I subtracted that should have been delivered to the tissue. So, O2 delivery tissue will be 4.6 ml of oxygen per 100 ml. So, this much ml of oxygen is delivered to the tissue for every 100 ml of blood that is being transported. So, remember all these values 